Congenital insensitivity to pain, or CIP for short, is a condition in which patients are born unable to experience pain in response to any kind of noxious stimulus applied to the body. It's rare, it affects approximately only one in a million people, but it gives us great insight into the fundamental neurobiology of uh, pain signaling, and also it gives us some new targets for drug discovery in relation to analgesia. The subtype of the condition that we've been looking at was first described at a genetic level by Jeff Woods, and it's due to homozygous uh, mutations in the Vulture-gated sodium channel NAV1.7. Now we know that NAV1.7 is expressed at high levels within sensory neurons, but we wanted to understand what's the role of this ion channel in regulating the function of human nociceptors and how does this contribute to the pathophysiology of CIP. We went on to answer these questions using a multimodal approach, exploiting some of the new techniques that we have for interrogating the human nociceptive system. Firstly, we studied the sensory phenotype of patients with CIP. And we found that in response to noxious stimuli, whether, whether it's thermal, whether it's mechanical, or whether it's chemical, they didn't experience pain. There were also some subtle deficits in thermoception to warm and cool. And interestingly, interestingly in addition, they didn't feel itch in response to peritogens such as histamine applied to the skin. Secondly, we looked at the nerve endings of nociceptors within skin. And in normal subjects, you can see here that the naked free nerve endings of nociceptors can be identified within the epidermis, shown by these arrows. In patients with CIP, although we can see dermal fibres, we see, saw an almost complete absence of these free nerve endings within the epidermis. We went on to look at a functional level at nociceptors, and this was undertaken by Geordie Serra, uh, who performed microneurography, which is a way of measuring activity within small fibres within human nerves. And again, we found at a functional level a complete absence of the characteristic nociceptor properties of axons within human peripheral nerves in the CIP patients. Andy Sagadala and Aaron Tracy here in Oxford undertook functional brain imaging and in normal controls, in response to the algogen capsaicin, you can see this enhanced cortical blood flow. In a patient with CIP, not only do they not experience pain, but there's marked attenuation in this cortical activation in response to the algogen. After this detailed assessment of the patients, we then moved on to look at a cellular model to really understand the mechanisms of these changes. To investigate the channel in vitro, five of us were taken from CIP and healthy control patients, reprogrammed to IPSC and then differentiated to a nociceptor-like fate using an established protocol. At the end of the differentiation and following further in vitro maturation, the neurons show extensive axonal outgrowth and often cluster in ganglion-like structures, as shown here in 60-day in vitro cultures. As well as IPSCs derived from CIP patients and healthy controls, in our study, we also journeyed through three additional gene-edited stem cell lines using the CRISPR-Cas9 system. The first of these was used to establish NAV1.7 protein expression in the IPSC nociceptors. We knocked in a C-terminal HA epitope tag into the SEA9A locus of a healthy control line and used the tag to probe NAV1.7 protein localization in the IPSC nociceptors. We found NAV1.7 localized to the cell surface enriched in terminal structures, and in myelinating co-cultures, the channel was present at the nodes of Ronvier. Next, aware of the known heterogeneity in IPSC models, we generated additional isogenic controls. We first genetically corrected a CIP variant in one of the patient lines, and then subsequently knocked out the channel in a healthy control line. This provided us a comprehensive toolkit with which to study NAV1.7 function in vitro. Previous studies using heterologous expression systems and rodent sensory neurons have shown us that in these contexts, NAV1.7 acts to amplify small subthreshold stimuli such that an action potential can be generated. However, the channel's contribution to the activity of human sensory neurons has so far never been explored. Using whole cell patch clamp recordings, we found that CIP IPSC derived nociceptors required a greater amount of depolarizing current to fire action potentials, consistent with a role. Um, for a NAV1.7 in setting their excitability. This observation was replicated in gene-edited NAV1.7 knockout nociceptors and reversed in CIP lines in which the pathogenic mutation had been corrected, causally linking the cellular phenotype to NAV1.7 function. Our studies therefore demonstrate the uh, importance of NAV1.7 to the excitability of human sensory neurons. 
but they also critically illustrate that neurons completely devoid of NAV 1.7 channel activity can still generate action potentials. These data suggest that the complete loss of pain phenotype of CRP patients is unlikely to be due to the biophysical deficit alone. Due to the uh, phenotype of the CIP patients, which has a complete insensitivity to pain and a virtual absence of other symptoms, pharmaceutical companies are very intrigued with developing NAV 1.7 blockers as a potential analgesic strategy. We reasoned that our gene-edited NAV 1.7 knockout nociceptors would act as a very good platform to test the selectivity of some of these compounds currently under clinical development. To this end, we use this approach to screen two putatively uh, selective NAV 1.7 inhibitors and found that while both did uh, reduce the excitability of our iPSC nociceptors, actually one of these compounds did so in a manner that was partially independent of its actions on NAV 1.7. In summary, our studies demonstrate that CIP arises due to a profound loss of functional nociceptive afferents which means that while blocking NAV 1.7 is undoubtedly a promising analgesic strategy, it may not replicate the full insensitivity to pain that we see in CIP patients.